spring we are not too late all right so here we are so we are basically trying to explain what is hadoop streaming so the standard command line is this here we first of all specify the hadoop jar and hadoop streaming jar hadoop streaming jar is internally a map reduce job which executes external processes as map reduce programs okay now what does it mean is that it assists you in 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 executing any of your binaries or any of your command as as a map logic or and as a reduce logic okay now how does it do that so after specifying command line the next argument you can specify is input input is generally a folder or a single file okay these are the arguments to your hadoop streaming job okay these are not arguments to the hadoop command hadoop command basically need either fs or other hadoop operations and or jar and then you have to specify and these rest of the arguments are provided to your program had it been your your binary instead of this jar then all of these arguments would have been passed to that all right now this is your input folder which you provide to the hadoop streaming job this is your output folder that you provide to the streaming job and these are the mapper or the reducer now look at it th th this carefully if you guys are from unix background you will immediately figure out that this is basically a command this is basically a simple command which replaces the spaces with new line okay this is a simple simple command which replaces the spaces with new line all right that's the that's the mapper we are specifying and same is here so this command this command basically what what exactly is it doing is it it is replacing so the syntax is acd acd is the command name what it does is substitute spaces with a new line i'll show you how does it work in without map reduce okay so so if you say echo hi how are you right and then you say acd right i'm sorry so let me just ssh2 because this this is a mac machine the behavior of acd is different on this machine is the terminal clear to all of you can you see the terminal or should i increase the font further now if you if you try to run so what does it mean when we pipe something what does it mean so those who are not very comfortable with unix let me just explain so echo hi how are you just gives out this gives out the whole string to the command line okay to the standard output okay now if you put a pipe here pipe basically sends the output to another program okay here you can put other commands like word count if you say word count then it, word count will do its job so it has word count had just counted number of characters number of words and number of lines all right and if you say if you say something like translate translate a to z with a to z so it will it will now the input by the mechanism of pipe has been given to the tr command right in the similar fashion what we are doing is we are substituting we are substituting space with 
a new line all right now if you see all it did was acid converted the line converted the spaces with new line so is this clear to everybody what does this command do anything you feed this command anything you feed this command it will replace space with new line all right whatever you feed it and the the mechanism to feed it is by the way of way of pipe all right so similarly so this is a command to which if you if you feed anything it will convert it into one word per line make sense now there is another command called unique minus c what does unique minus c does so if you have got if you have got say echo high and then and then again echo high so there are two highs right so if you just want to if you just want to count how many times a particular word has come in you can say unique minus c basically whatever is this output being printed whatever this output is being printed echo hi echo hi echo hello so it has printed hi hi hello so if you give it to unique command it will basically it will basically if you do this then it will remove the duplicates and if you do minus c it will count number of occurrence of each word provided provided your input is ordered if your input is not ordered then it will not do the job if you say if you convert it into hello then it will give a wrong output okay so unique wants your unique minus c basically counts how many times a value is repeated basically the number of occurrences of each word each unique word that's what the unique minus c does provided the input given to unique minus c is already sorted okay so both these commands are clear to you acd and unique who who has a confusion about this so if you have any confusion at this point just let me know so that i can click clarify it all i wanted to tell is acd command replaces one range of characters with another range of characters and unique minus c basically uh, counts number of occurrences all right so everybody is clear good good so basically if you had looked at it so here we are providing a mapper which does nothing but nothing but creates a list of words one word per line all right and reducer basically counts the words now if the output of this line if the output of this line is sorted then unique minus c will basically count the words right okay so so hope everybody is clear about this now now let me let me take a step by step what is going to go inside this all right now now say basically the whole 
arrangement which we are trying to do here this is basically a word count example using without writing a single line of code this is a word count example without writing a single line of code by just using these commands all right and how does it work so see your line is this your map job which is scd will convert this into sa re sa ga and after this it will be sorted it will be sorted by by how do map reduce map reduce uh, on the map, map reduce framework and once it is sorted then it is passed to unique minus c and you get the result all right you get the result so in hadoop when, when, when in 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 the streaming job when when you are running your mapper all you need to provide is the key and the value and the key and the value have to be tab separated all right they have to be tab separated okay and if you don't provide the value then also it's completely fine that's also completely fine okay and the the interesting part is here instead of instead of executing your reducer on each key value pairs the out the 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 content which is provided to the reducer in a streaming job is nothing but sorted value sorted output of your mapper okay whatever output whatever output your mappers produce is just sorted and sorted based on the key and how does it identify the key the key is the first value before the tab okay before the tab so the dynamics are pretty simple here so whatever 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 output comes from whatever file you specify that file will be fed to your mapper and 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 whatever output comes from your mapper will be sorted on the key and how is the key identified out of the output of mapper by the basically based on the tab separation the first value whatever is there so your mapper is always give key tab separated some value okay and this is absolutely optional right key and then there is a tab and then some value right that's what the mapper does so in case of hadoop streaming the dynamics are a bit different dynamics are a bit different the output of mapper job is sorted by hadoop and fed to the reducer it's very very straightforward the output of mapper is fed to the reducer after sorting okay and on what basis it is sorted based on the key and how does a key identified out of the output given by the mapper is based on based on the, the first value before the tab okay first value before the tab if you don't specify a tab the whole line will be considered a key all right okay all right where is the sorting happening we haven't ha given any sort command sorting is the only job hadoop is performing for you okay so when you say this command right when you say this command so you have specified this input directory so this is equivalent to saying this star so meaning take all the input from this folder give it give it to this acd command all right and then sort it and then feed it to the reducer okay so this sorting 
is what is internally performed this sorting is what is being internally performed by hadoop and this assembling is also done by hadoop so input is just a folder name right so this streaming job what it does is when you specify a folder name it picks up all the all the files in that folder and concatenate them okay concatenate their output and execute this mapper and the way you can think of map hadoop is that this is what it is doing inside it's taking your mapper code whatever your mapper is there and then piping the output from that folder and then whatever output your mapper code is giving passing it to via a sort command okay and then giving it to the reduce command right okay yes i am recording the session all right so the sorting is being done internally by hadoop okay I'll, uh, so that's i'm talking to vishal right can we by any way sort using values right that's a good point srikant if you have to sort by values instead of spitting instead of say earlier I'll, I'll tell you so so say your mapper is is giving this output key one tab tab value one right if your in, mapper is giving this value value one key two value two and what you want is this will be sorted based on the key if you wanted the output to be sorted by the by the value rather than the key right in those cases you put your mapper mapper is completely under your command that is your code your mapper should give out this sort of output all right then whatever the values are here then it will be sorted accordingly all right make sense rikant all right now Naveen's point is the keys produced in each mapper is sorted in the same, same mapper instance. I mean by the same task before sending to reducer. Yes. So before sending to the reducer, the keys are sorted on the same machine. Okay. Same machine. The, the output of mappers is gathered and then sorted and then, then, then stored on the same machine and then merged back to the central place. Okay. That's I'm answering to Naveen's question. Okay, can I specify? Can I speci uh, Can I specify to take a single file as input? Definitely. You, all you need to do is say big dot txt. That's all. That's all you need to do. All right. So if your file is there, my file.txt you can provide as input. It's completely acceptable by buying this thing. All right. So Vishal, did I was I able to explain? So this magic, this magic internally is being performed by Hadoop, and this sort command is the secret sauce of Hadoop. Okay. So this is where Hadoop puts a lot of effort. In doing the sorting so basically it's a very simple process on the surface to understand basically okay so all it does is take the input input file whatever it is concatenate those files and then feed it to your mapper this is what this is something of this sort is being done internally okay good good so on the other way you can look at it 
if your input if you have got multiple reducers this is what it is going to do right now we have only single reducer so so should i run it let me try to run it for you guys and then okay now since it is being displayed at multiple line i'll just make it in a single line because command need to be accepted in single line in case you have a multiple line command and you want to keep in multiple line you can put a backslash like this here and then can execute it all right so right now i'll avoid the confusion so here this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to run this run this on the server okay let's see if it works all right so it says that the output folder already exists okay so we need to change the name of the output folder all right let's call it output x okay and let's see if it yields some output and what did we pass we pass this folder called sgiri word count input and what does it contain let's have a look hadoop 1 and then 8000 All right, now we have this file browser where we have, what do we have? Okay, here as Giri, and then you have word count, and then you have input folder. Under that, there is this big file, okay, lying in the HDFS itself. So whatever folder you provide here has to be on the HDFS okay what does it say why does it give an error all right so now your our output has been generated into output X folder let's have a look at that all right a student and then we have my login somewhere there is my login and then output x and then you have part zero all right so it has done its word count job so basically it has produced the word count okay now in case you want to do a translation also see after this is done i want to i want to I want to substitute, substitute, substitute anything which is not A to Z, A to Z or 0 to 9, right? With nothing. All right. This is what I want to do. Will it make any difference to you? Say I have a plus here. So what will it do? Okay, so instead of that, let's do something else. So let's say that anything which is not alphabetic, let's first replace it. Let's first replace it with, okay, let's first replace it with space and, and here we say, here we say, okay, like this. All right. Now, what does it do? Anybody? What does this command do? Anybody? Oh, 
All right. So if you don't have any translation, still you need to provide a way on which the data will be sorted, right? So because Mapper's role is to provide a key for sorting. If you do not provide any sorting, uh, any, any tab separated key values, then the whole line will be considered for sorting, okay? And in that manner, the values will be availed to the reduce function. Good, good. So anything which is not a, a alphanumeric character will be replaced with a space. And here, any number of spaces will be replaced by multiple, multiple spaces will be replaced by a single Okay. Multiple number of spaces will be replaced by, uh, let's just see what happens. All right. All right. Now, what happened to this guy? If you see, okay. All right, so we are able to replace our uh, Character, just that we need to provide this. Right? So if you do that, then this command will be taken as the input. And on top of it, if you want to do a translation, you can do translation A to Z, and then you can say A to Z. All right. Basically, it will convert it into lowercase and then run it. Make sense to you? This will basically convert it into lowercase. So here I'm trying to do some bigger, bigger magic, which is remove all the non alphanumeric characters. And second magic I'm trying to do is yes, yes, you can do all of this uh, along with me uh, from the command line. All right. So you can see that. All right. So those who haven't attended my regex classes, uh, I'll, I'll send across the videos and uh, that should help you. Okay. It is also available in our YouTube channel and you can see there. All right. Now here, what am I trying to do is, okay, say this is here and then I say TR and A to Z need to be translated into A to Z. Okay. So now the, the, everything has also been converted into the lower case. Make sense. Whatever input was given here, has been passed further and has been given to there. Okay. Now, instead of doing this way, what you should ideally be doing is taking this command and putting it in a shell pile. I'll show you in the next screen. So this is just to tell, give you an idea because the Hadoop will think of it as a command and then try to find this whole command in one go and then execute. Okay. So instead of piping the whole data here, you should ideally be putting it in a shell file, separate file, and then passing that shell file here. I'll show you just in a minute. All I wanted to try show you that 
lot of complex processing is possible without ha having to write a single line of code okay now in the similar fashion you have a reducer reducer can also be in any format you wish okay so that is one so this is what happens inside the next step is to basically put it into a command file let's say my command.csh sh i am just putting it in my own folder i will not spoil everybody's folders okay and i think so here it is i'll just do okay ch mode plus x means i have made it executable all right so this contains my command whatever input is given to this cell file will be given to my command and whatever output my sed gives hadoop will take it back sort it and then feed it to my reduce reduce file okay reduce command all right so my command.sh contains this code now the next step is is to do this all right now i'll show you the same command so i have we have put this complex complex command line into my command.csh and here there is one more parameter we are passing we are saying minus file my command.sh now why do we need to do this so when when your command is not available on all the nodes or any node for that matter what you need to do is tell hadoop to copy it onto all the nodes because this is your command uh, sed was available on all nodes sed being a unix command but available on all nodes okay so here there is a lot of magic going on inside hadoop for what is it doing is first the file you specify here wherever its its blocks are existing it is sending your mappers to be executed on those machine okay and whatever output your mappers are giving that output is being collected and sorted and then fed to your reducer okay now now this file when when it has to run your mapper your mapper is in your command file if there are multiple mappers there are 10 mappers in the different machine this command need to be available over there right therefore therefore you need to tell hadoop streaming to make a copy of your command to all the nodes and therefore the last one this is a very 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 interesting point because this is what probably most of us would forget okay so say for example your mapper is existing in python which means all the data nodes should have python all right if your one of the data node doesn't have python then your life is in soup okay then your life is in soup also also if you are using an external module in python which is installed somewhere right then you need to make sure that that module either you ship it here or you make sure that that module is available on all nodes by installing separately via via any either puppet master or via your own ssh commands whatever you wish but whatever modules need need your, your mapper requires or your reducer requires you should make that available on each node okay because the way reducer is going to run or where is it going to run that also you have no control upon okay so therefore therefore you need to tell hadoop streaming that hey this is my command please take it to all the mappers wherever you want to run this command copy it it's not something which is available already okay 
no navin it wouldn't do that it does it only in the cases of java program so if hadoop streaming dot jar does not exist on all the nodes then in those cases it will copy that okay what if one of the nodes node that has the file block okay let me read madhav's uh, question what if one of the node that has the file block on which cell script has to run has windows then will hadoop give error or automatically find some alternative to unix command hadoop will straight away give error it will say command not found okay it will try to execute that command whatever you have specified and so you can imagine that if you run scd sed on windows what will happen in the command prompt exactly that error you will get in in hadoop all right so if your node one of the node is existing on windows while rest of the node are existing on unix and if you try to execute these commands in case your file happen your file block happen to be on the windows then you will get an error saying sed not found good but good question i would have missed uh, this point all right good 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 now all right so all right so this one is a uh, little uh, cool in the sense that we have put all our stuff into this command and we are trying to execute it this time i am putting slashes after my command so in case your command is spanning onto multiple line in unix you can put these slashes okay and that will do okay now when we for first time we run it it should give a error immediately saying output folder already exist in case it exists looks like it doesn't exist so every day if the output folder exists it gives an immediate error otherwise it runs it okay so this time this time it is going to let's just go back where is it saving the output it is saving the output in output 7 let's have a look at output 7 but where is output 7 located as giri word count output 7 and that as giri has to be with reference to the home folder of the user so in the hdfs where is as giri there and then you have got you have got word count and output 7 word count and output 7 right so here this time the output will be little neat if you see only the numbers word or alphanumeric ones are left okay so you can see that so these are all numerics going on right now okay we can actually remove these all numeric ones also still there are lots of numerics i hope the next screen wouldn't have so this is your key which is this is the word and these the counts okay if you want to sort it again you can just in your in your in your uh, program you can just provide a echo command or or say cat 
which will basically take input from in standard input give it to the standard output okay if you do not have any mapper to do somebody was just asked me right right so yes it is it has stored in a single file why because by default by default streaming job creates only one reducer had there been multiple reducer there could have been multiple files created all right okay we'll talk about that one also how to do that when we talk about so now all the a's are coming as you can see all the a's are coming and now if you want to just if you want to just sort it further you can just simply provide a i mean echo whatever is there on the standard output and that's all okay so if i say echo hi and here if i echo what happens nothing right but if i say get this then whatever input you have got here okay it is given out so if your next command let me just do it on prompt for you so where, where did we store our data here right let's say we are doing this okay we are doing this now input file this time is this okay input is this and mapper is mapper is nothing but nothing but cat dash all right and that's all we need to provide an output also so output and i call it as giri slash word count slash sort all right so there are no reducers in this case but there is one mapper all it all the mapper is doing whatever is the output over here over here passing it as the to the to the hadoop saying that that's all all right which means that by the way of sorting this will be sorted correctly what is does it say okay did we make a mistake while specifying our command i think it needs so if i have reducer and i say cat dash does it work or does it do not it says the mapper output exist and therefore we need to so there cannot be more than one reducer in case of streaming is there no other way to configure this there can definitely be more than one reducer even in the case of in the case of streaming job you can specify on the command line argument so nothing to worry on that all right also is the mapper output again sorted back stored back as blocks of 64 mb in the hello yes no mapper output is not stored into the hdfs while the output of the reducer final one is stored okay why does it say errors did it succeed did it not succeed and let's see what it has done to the sorted file let's say we have got what what do we did we get word count and there we had put in a folder called sorted one 
and it has this okay now this is sorted as you can see clearly okay this is sorted Now your keys are sorted and last block will contain the, the word which has got highest frequency. And who has got highest frequency? The word called the. Okay. And before that there is space also counted multiple times and off is also utilized multiple places. And so this is the order. This is the high, most frequent word is the and Okay, and if you see this, so Prince is the only word of PRA is the only word which is not generally common in the dictionary. Therefore, PRA must be PRA must be a prince or PRA must be some sort of pro protagonist in this novel. So you can do these kind of quick analytics looking at the content. If you remove the common words in English anyway, which all see they and and then you can see quickly that Prince, Pierre, and these are the quite frequent word. The Pierre has come 1785 times. Natasha also has come thousand times. So maybe she's a uh, also a main character all right so what i did just now what to demonstrate to you the example that it is possible to take the output of one process and run it as separate process so this is what i ran okay and it did nothing this mapper and reducer actually did nothing all it did it was whatever was input it gave out further all right okay so Naveen was I able to answer your question Reducer output is stored on the file system. Okay. Good. Virana, the order can be changed, right? By defining by defining your, uh, you know, keys. Okay. Now I need to think that in case I have to, I have to order something in a decreasing manner. Probably what I would do is I'll just multiply I will just multiply the the integer by minus one okay so that my the most negative number will come at the top all right so probably that is one way and other way would be there would be Hadoop streaming would be providing some parameter I mean the way we, which I did was that all I did was I multiplied my key with minus one and it worked also here All right, so we can look into that one. Probably they must have started providing the sorting order, but I'm not sure. Most likely you can control all of that behavior by specifying the proper key. The way I just told you that in case you want the maximum number at the top, what would, you, what would I do is just multiply all the number by minus one. And therefore the biggest number becomes the most negative number which is the smallest and hence it will get the first at the top okay 
good good so we just demonstrated few cool things first was without writing a single line of code without compiling uploading and all of the cycle we were able to we were able to execute our script all right any doubts here so hands on is done all right so any doubt about streaming jobs before before we move on to the discussion in detail vishal parveen fmk good 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 all right so the synopsis of the the whole thing is that the stream streaming job helps you using any kind of programming language in as map reduce okay that's a streaming job okay now that's a role of a streaming job first second in case you have got Uh, multiple commands in, in as part of your mapper you can put them into a program uh, as a script and pass or pass on that script as to the to the streaming job okay but you'd have to specify a minus file argument okay second second it's not only shell programs which can be executed this way using streaming job it can be any binary whether it is uh, written in c or it is in python it is in any any programming language you can you can use for writing the map reduce code as long as it can run as a command line it will be doing good the other things which we discussed today was the key value pair the input to the reducer is a bit different in case of earlier in in case of java programs it is key and the values that's the only input provided to the java program while here the reducer gets the whole text where the key is tab separated from the value and key is the first field in the in your file all right so key is the first first field after that comes tab and then comes value okay and the data which will be provided to your reducer by hadoop will be sorted by the key good good so moving on and yeah even though the code was successful we saw many errors yes why Th that is something which i have done here so what was actually happening here it was trying to execute our our code at different different machines right and different machines uh, basically were having some sort of problems because this file only exists on one of the machines okay so some internal errors were occurring on one of the task executor and immediately what hadoop did was to exit what hadoop did was execute it, it on a different machine okay so here it is started executed it failed on that machine and then it it gave it to another machine and then got it executed that is something which is interesting all right no these were not because of that minus file op option these these errors were because of some other problems on each task tracker i need to debug that part okay i need to debug that part why did that happen and that could be one of the reasons 
করে বিরানা all right so this is cool now all right so so how many of you actually tried i i, I got only the answer sheets from few people okay you can write your program even in the email in whatever format you prefer but the the subjective text has to be provided in a separate way okay so that we can review it independently so only few people from the session have actually done the done the problems okay so the first one was the frequency of the letters do you use do you need do you really need map reduce Okay, so do you guys uh, want to participate in the discussion? So the first question, first problem statement was that in case you need to compute the frequencies of letters, do you need to do map reduce? Yes, if the size of the file is such that it is already distributed or if the file size of the file is so big that you are not able to store it reliably on a single node. Good, good. Then if you, if you are if your file is so big that you inevitably have to store it on multiple machine, then most likely, most likely, your file is is lying on HDFS, and when you do computation of frequency of letters, it will be better if you use an approach like MapReduce. Okay. And if yes, then how are you going to write the map reduce? Can somebody give a quick answer? What will be the output of your mapper? The mapper you are going to write to compute the frequencies. If you have to do the frequency computation of all the letters, what what code should your mapper has what code should your mapper have yes same as word count example just that key would be each letter okay without map, map mr approach all you require is Right, right. So without MR approach, you will simply create an integer array A of size 26. 
scan the text character by scan the text character by character and then increase a0 for a small a and a25 for for z and others in between right a1 if if the letter is b this is the traditional approach which we had been using right <coughs> This is the traditional approach we had been using. So the problem with this approach is that the RAM, although the memory will not be the limitation because it's only six, 26 integers you need to store in the memory, but it will consume a lot of disk read writes. Okay. And CPU also might become the bottleneck. All right. Now the mapper approach, probably all of you are clear, right? So all the mappers, every, each mapper has to just give out So instead of that mother, what if for each line we do the frequency analysis by using the same approach as this one? Will it help in any way? Then giving out the the only ones in a do you think if you have got lines in your input? And instead of instead of the way we handle the words, for each word we dedicated one one key value pair. Instead of that, if we read the whole line, which is given to the mapper, and we break, I mean we count the do the frequency computation of the letters and give out the computation result as the output of mapper. Will that make sense? Yes. So the sorting data will become smaller and as we go further we will discuss something called something called combiner and yesterday I ran couple of results just to compare the compare the two approaches the result were the result were impressive actually okay so you guys should actually code it or or whatever programming language you know you try to use write map reducer for this and then then compare the outputs okay all three first is the approach which you were telling just now where a1 B1, C1, that's all you do. Okay. And mm. so Vishal, I doubt if the sort order will actually change. It will just improve a bit, a little bit. Or maybe it will be. Uh, okay, that computation is difficult to do actually. Let me let me think over the computation. How much order will it change? But when I did combiner, right, where all the output generated on single machine is combined together, all the results, uh, all the output of all the mappers running on the same machine are combined together before passing it on to the reducer. In those cases, the results were very impressive. All right, so so basically we did the, the same thing created an array a of 26 size and line by line we give gave the results okay that's a one step up optimization of the usual one okay okay so Srikant's question is, why would there be more than one mapper running 
on one machine. There would be more than one mapper running on one machine because each each block each block will have multiple lines, right? Multiple lines, and the input which is given to each mapper at one time is a single line. Okay, so in case and the block each block is how much 128 mb right if a block has 128 lines say multiple lines say 128 lines so the mapper will be run 128 times on each on each block okay so this is as per the design that is the default behavior of any map reduce code that it takes the plain text file and it it uh, feeds line by line to your mapper code okay we'll go into the details that can we make it such that can we make it such that that only one mapper runs on a machine we'll go into that detail okay in one of the cases we had to do that that the whole file should be fed to the whole mapper instead of multiple mappers that is also sort of possible by by controlling hadoop okay now see so the first problem is uh, everybody is clear about the first problem if anybody has doubt just raise it now Uh, no Naveen so each block each block is each block is something called uh, made up of multiple records okay record you can think of each line of a file is a record and each block contains multiple lines okay and on each record which is each line you can imagine for time being mapper will be executed okay did i confuse you so if there is a file big file right so mapper only gets one line at a time mapper does not get multiple lines at a time Okay. it means we can configure multiple mappers on a single machine yes you do not you don't you cannot configure that part okay it just yeah you can configure multiple mappers on a single machine by the way of something called record reader we will go into the details of controlling them no for each block of the data there is okay okay let me let me take a step back okay let me take a step back this is causing a bit of confusion i'll basically i had reserved it for the next class but i'll go ahead now okay so let's imagine that your mapper has got a class okay for each block for each block a single instance of mapper will be created okay for each block a single instance of mapper will be created okay and mapper dot map the method which is there in your mapper class will be executed per line per will be executed okay so the command which we are talking here is a shell command so whatever instance need to be done for the shell command it that whole pipeline will be 
created and and for each line this command is going to be executed this command is going to be executed for each line okay streaming job must have done some sort of optimization here where whole block goes to a single mapper but the default mapper behavior the way we control it in java is a whole mapper class it, the instance will be created per block but but mapper dot map map method will be executed per record which is line of our in our example what did i answer your question abin no not really not really no so mapper class is not a single turn but hadoop does a one step optimization of of creating the object of mapper class so that it doesn't spend too much of time in again and again creating the instance of a class okay Yes, Rikan. That's right. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll make sure that you get a thorough clarity of this concept tomorrow. All right. Or if time permits, then today itself. All right. Now moving on. So frequencies of the letter we have computed. No doubt about it. Everybody is clear. Now, how many? What is your solution to this? if you have hues text and the text has got anagrams okay then how would you find out great great perfect 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 all of your approaches are just perfect okay so the way it is done is you take the word sort the word by characters okay which means that all those words which have which are anagram of each other will produce the same key because they all have the same characters right it just the arrangement is different if you sort that which means they it will lead to the same key right so cat so th this is the diagram which will make it clear very clear so if your input is this the cat act in tic tac toe the mapper would basically take each word sort the well characters in their increasing ascii value and will that will be the key so e is comes before h comes before t in alphabetic manner and we have sorted and that is the key for the word called the same way for ca cat it's act for act it's again act now notice that 
For cat and act, because they are anagrams, their key is same. When you sort their characters, A will go before the C and T will come last. Alright? For in, it's the same thing. Tick, it's C, I, T, because C is before I and that is before T. And similarly here, tack, act and cat all have got A, C, T as the key. Alright? And now, mapper will produce this output. This line shows what is being done, what is being done by the Hadoop. And what Hadoop did was sorted it by the key. Okay. Sorted it by the key and then grouped it. And here we are talking, not talking about the Hadoop streaming per se. We are talking about general Hadoop, uh, Hadoop Java 1. And there we go. In reducer, you don't have to do anything. You just print the values only. You don't print the keys. That's all. All right. So this is clear to everyone. Anybody has doubt about this? All right. The summary is that summary is that we are trying to solve anagram by the way of MapReduce. Okay. Anagram is a little tricky problem. We are trying. We are given a huge, huge text of few hundred, few hundred GBs. Okay. And what we are trying to do, figure out is the anagram words. Okay. To to do that. Uh, the simplest way is form the key okay mapper would form the key which is basically sorted ordered characters and that that has given them that that generates the key and when you sort it it gives the value is there any limit on the size of the value there is no limit on the size of the value per se Mm, I'm not sure. I think Hadoop is able to handle even if your value is is fairly bigger than the bigger than the memory, because we have dealt with the values value as in in certain cases in one of the cases we had to process a binary file, right? And the whole binary file was being fed as a single input to the mapper. Okay, the whole binary file and the binary file was beyond few m a few hundred MBs. Okay, and it actually took care of it very well. Okay, it were only us who were basically consuming the the RAM. Hadoop did not much consume the RAM much for the value. Only for the key it requires the RAM. Okay, so in case your uh, value is going beyond a certain point of time, then also it sort of creates a stream, byte stream for you. Uh, internally, it creates a byte stream and makes sure the value is stays in the disk. It does a fairly, fair, fairly good, good optimization for you. All right. Okay, okay. Okay, when you say value, what do you what do you mean output? No, the value means the value key and the value here. Okay, value also mean here whatever values you provide as output that also get summarized in the reducer. 
so so value means the value of um, a, as given out by the mapper all right apur did i confuse you no i mean right 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 yeah it's a key value pair right so we are talking about that value so apur the, the that decision about key is the the key problem in designing the map reduce right here since we want to bring together all the all the anagrams therefore it is up to us what should be the key such that all the anagrams result in the same key okay given each word what should be the key such that all the words that are anagram should come together okay and since we are interested in finding the anagrams right if we saw what does it mean by anagrams anagrams are basically different arrangements of letters in a word all right anagrams are basically different arrangements of the words uh, different arrangements of the characters in a word and therefore we sorted it such that all the anagrams will result in the exact same key and therefore hadoop will bring all such words together and that is the that is the trick that is the trick we play all the time such that we utilize this ability of hadoop to sort your data into solving your problems okay so here we sorted it by the ordered set of the characters okay now the next problem probably everybody is clear about the first the anagram problem should i move ahead should i move ahead with the, this good have this is okay okay in the last sentence all i was trying to explain is that we were trying to exploit ability of hadoop to sort the data sort your values into solving your problem okay all right moving on to the next problem apur should we move on good 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 so we have got a dna one this one is easier there is a file containing user and its dna all you want is you want to find out people whose dna's are identical how would you do that quick quick so what will be the output of your mapper had it been in the database we would do this select dna comma concatenate users from my table group by dna good good since we want to bring all the users with identical dna together we would make the dna as the key and user as the value
perfect perfect this everybody got right great all right so this is the output This is straight, so everybody got it. Now the next one is little tricky. Next one is little tricky. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, guys, I'm back.
Okay, let me read the questions. <clears throat> Okay, okay. So Madhav is saying that key equals to DNA one, value equals to user, key equals DNA, inverted value in user. Okay, okay. So here the objective is to find the people who have same DNA or the mirror image of the DNA. Okay. So imagine that some scientists have told that all the people whose DNA is identical or is mirror image of each other belong to a family. And your objective is to find all such DNAs and then okay keys will be sorted by dna okay but how would that help So it will give a common key if DNA. Actually, there was somebody. Ah, Naveen's question. Print DNA in such a way that 0th character is lesser than nth character. Then leave it as is. Or else reverse the DNA. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm just trying to figure out. Right, 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 right. Makes sense, actually. And Naveen, let me just think it loud. <coughs> so, A, C, Z, T, A. Now, in this case, in this case, what will be the key? Yeah, exactly, Vishal, you're right. Okay, so we left it as is, right? Now there is an now there is a reverse one of it also existing. G C A. Now what will be the key for this? Right? So you will again leave it as is and will not come together, right? Yes, Vishal was also of the same opinion actually. Okay, okay, let me let me understand Sanjay's uh, approach also.
ओके ओके गुड संजय संजय आई आई एक्चुअली एज एज एम गोइंग अप राइट इट्स कमिंग डाउन अगेन एंड अगेन सो लेट मी जस्ट इंक्रीज द साइज ऑफ द विंडो एंड आई होप good good hmm. so navin in case in case you are maintaining the map right then if the keys are too big because we are dealing with a big data so you might run out of the memory very very quickly and also map will not be uh, do the job because different machines will be having different maps right because map here you are talking about hash map right not the this thing okay so praveen and vishal has got an approach which is exactly same or similar okay so do you agree with that approach yes and sanjay also has got the same approach the even set is in memory so if you think about this so each mapper is going to be running on multitude of computers right and each of them is maintaining a map separate map which has nothing to do with each other so so effectively whatever you do you will end up with a broken logic right right so the okay so the approach sanjay praveen and and vishal are saying are exactly same or closely okay very very similar is is this okay so basically our objective is to find people <clears throat> whose dna is either identical or id complete mirror image of each other right so acgt and tgca both are both we have to bring together that we can bring together only if we can generate same key for both these users and only both the only these kind of users right if we mirror if we mirror the mirror the key okay if we just reverse the key and check and pick the smaller of the two so whether a string or its mirror mir reverse of a string will always result in the same key okay so key is going to be smaller of dna and its reverse right so whether it's identical or reverse they are going to lead you to the same key and hence it will group them together okay because because we are trying to do this sorting for hundreds of gbs of data if we had this luxury of doing it you you know doing it in memory doing it in memory we would have done it easily okay but here what we are trying to do is we are trying to utilize the sort command or we are trying to utilize hadoop's sorting ability to bring find out 
to uh, to solve your problem right to find out whether these two people have the same or mirror dna right that's what we are trying to do so let's take a case so acgt the reverse of acgt is tcga which one is minimum of acgt and TG tgca acgt right so this will lead to acgt as the key similarly we take the another one now we reverse it and again compare out of tgca or acgt what is the key acgt because this is minimum of minimum of the key and its reverse minimum of dna and its reverse okay so basically we are trying to figure out we are trying to utilize the sorting because if you sort now all those users user 1 and user 2 they got the same key and hence they will come together all right Okay. Okay. For okay, let me just try to understand what Madhav is saying. For every DNA, we will have two keys. Example, ATGC equals user one. Then mapping for map map mapping for this DNA is key value is ATGC and user one. Okay and all right all right later sort the key value pair okay 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 yeah that's also a good approach but you'll have to do two passes basically you'll have to ignore one of the sets All right. 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 That also ignoring one of the sets is going to be again a tricky problem if you think about it. All right, all right. So the mapper led to this, then we got the, these details and we are through. All right. So any doubt about this? Basically the trick here is to find out to, I mean, as your mapper should generate a key such that the entities which we are trying to bring together they should come together or the entities which we are trying to bring together should have the same keys we need to generate keys of the entities which we want to bring together same all right that's the whole trick about it does it make sense to you trying to do so let's take a case so acgt the reverse of acgt is tc tgca or acgt what is the key acgt because this is minimum of minimum of the key and so why agct so minimum out of this and this is this right Minimum as in, whenever we say minimum, uh, whenever ASCII values we talk about, ASCII values are, so A, A here is smaller than T. So, but if you have to lexically order these two things, if you have to lexically order these two things, which one will you keep above? If, if somebody asks you, can you, arrange these two words alphabetically which one will come 
before the which one come come first in the class when when teacher used to arrange the pe people by alphabetic who would come first right so that is the minimum similarly here minimum out of this and what is the reverse of tgca a g c t right right and the minimum is a g c t so one thing you need to note is one thing you know, need to note is out of this these two the key is always same right key is always same yes 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 all right good good so we are all good to move ahead all right so in the same way when we put the key such that that user 6 and user 7 produce the same key they will result they will come together right because that's what our reduce function does all right so who did this one the voting one good i saw naveen has done Okay. So key will be voti and value will be voter. Okay, okay. I think a better idea will be to copy. Okay, so all right, so so in this point is that list one is going to be key equals voti all right
All right, all right. Good, good. Good. You're almost there. Okay. And anybody else? Good, good. So the kind of answer, anybody else? So basically all we want as a result of this problem is all those people who have voted for a person their wealth should be added and that should be the vote count Okay, okay. So this problem itself is little, little complex. And the objective of uh, this problem is to tell you that, that it takes a little bit of uh, effort to do even a very, very simple job, such as joining two tables. <coughs> If, if you look at this problem, it's basically joining list 1 and list 2 and then grouping them together, right? L join list 1 and list 2 on what basis? On the basis of who voted for the person, okay? On the basis of the, the person who got the votes, okay? And basically the vote is and later on just do the summation of the two all right all right all right so what sanjay has be, is trying to tell is exactly something very very close to what i'm about to tell all right. so is everybody clear about the problem or do you have any doubt about the problem okay so i'm assuming everybody is clear no All right, so let me take this answer. So as a result of the first output, okay, all I did was merge the two files. Okay, merge the two files. 
that's all so if i merge the two files which means the voter is the key from the first one person is the key from the second one and i have got this now voter a which is person a here were worth 5 voted to c and b right if you, if that comes together which means a voted to b and c and a's worth is 5 right in the reduce phase all you did was did a comma separated thing okay all right we did a comma separated thing now that was first pass as a result of first pass this is what is generated now the second map reduce for the second map reduce this is the input file which contains who voted for who all and who's and this person who voted what's his worth okay now as a result of the second map all we did was all we did was we printed out b5 c5 basically the values the values which b and c got because of voting by a because of the voting by a b and c got some values similarly because of voting by b c got some values okay and here just for the beauty reasons just for the because we want zeros in the output so we are also putting a got zero as the wealth because of a voted to b and c okay b got five because a voted to b c got five and a got nothing because a voted to these guys similarly similarly c got one b got zero all right now in the next stage all we need to do is in the reduce phase all we need to do is sum up the values that's all okay is this clear no we first brought together basically we made the voter as the key first there are multiple problems with this code i will talk about them later okay let me explain again so first we joined these two tables on the basis of this and what does it mean by joining we ran a mapper Let, let's imagine that we ran first mapper who gave this content then we ran second mapper who gave another content and then we joined these two tables okay j j concatenated these two files as simple as that okay and in reduce phase we brought all the values for a key together and after this reduce phase this is the first map reduce phase okay so this is the file which was generated what does it represent a voted for b and c and a's value is 5 right this is the first phase first phase has formed this kind of stuff all right now we ran the second mapper all second mapper did was by virtue of this voting how much the how much by virtue of a voting to b how much the value was given to b fpk when a voted for b what is the value with that b got by virtue of a voting to b five right because a's worth is five so if a votes for somebody like c a will gain five 
Here also, this table basically represents A voted for B and C and A's value is 5. Right? And after that, after that, when we list down all the values which each of these people have gained by virtue of this voting, and then we basically, that, that person's name is becomes the key. And once we do the summation of their values, so B's value is 5 plus 0, which means 5. C's value is 5 plus 0, which is 5. And A value, A's value is 0. 0 that is okay and now again f's value is 11 right 11 which is okay and so on okay c's value is 1 plus 5 which is 6 all right so this is how it is so basically we brought together the values by by putting the appropriate keys Does make sense to you? No? F me K? F me K? All right, all right. Good. So everybody is okay with this, this kind of approach? Do you see problems in this approach? Anybody? Anybody who can find out problems in this approach? I know my the problems in my approach, but I won't tell you. Anybody? Map to is second phase of maps and reduces. The way in a, because you for when you run map to this becomes your input file. Basically, mapper just I've marked two in front of it because this is the second pass is starting how how are you preserving the relationship in map 2 okay map 2 I'm not trying to preserve the relationship at all as a result of map 2 all I'm doing is take all the value pick up for the first value and print it against all the these people okay pick up the first value iterate from one to the, the last and for each of them print five and the guy who is giving giving just put as as the you know just for the heck of it just put a zero the value of the guy who voted for them just put his value at zero okay and I, uh, zero is basically assigned just for beauty reasons because we wanted as part of the problem statement we wanted zero in the output okay if you don't put put zeros in the in this then then th th this will not never come okay therefore i have put zeros also against each one all right result of map 1 again needs to be transferred to multiple nodes yes so anyway that is anyway going to going to be stored on on hdfs because after the mapper runs and this one hadoop does this cv in the reduce phase we put commas is it voting for the self yeah you can say that it is voting for the self because by, by virtue of being voting for B and C, it gave value bo to both of them, but it gave value to itself at zero. Okay. Now let me have a look at it. Why is D zero? Because D has voted for nobody. Okay. D has voted for nobody. So as I saying, then when we were printing 
for B5, C5, C1, we also printed that this guy voted for somebody. That's all. Okay, okay. Is it? Yeah. The problem would be if worth of the voter depended on the worth of the voter depended on whom he is waiting for. Okay. Worth of the voter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That is that would be actually a complex problem, Sanjay. And and if you look at it, if you look at it uh what you're proposing i mean what you the 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 idea you're giving is actually something like pays rank algorithm and i have actually tried to simplify it in in this manner in this voting example because pays rank is something for which the whole whole of map reduce was written okay any other problem do you see let me i'm just trying to figure out Yes, multiple disk I.O. and network operations in this approach, right? That's very right, Vishal. But see, there is no other way out also. There is no other way out. If you get so many people in a, in, a, in a country, then you need to require all of that. But that can be optimized, definitely. Okay, how will the merge work when the data is splitted across other node? Okay, so that's a very good question. So merge, the way the merge works, if you remember our first second session, I'll just open the second session. So when the data is splitted across the nodes, Where is our mapper? So if you remember that when the data is there was there on multiple nodes, by virtue of shuffling, it came together. The keys came together actually. The values of the same key, keys came together. All right. Okay, how will the merge work when data is split across other nodes? So you can imagine that these are two files, two HDFS files, and all we did was provided them as a single input. Put them in a folder and told Hadoop that this is where my file is lying. That's okay. Srivasant or am I missing the question? All right. So any any anybody else sees a problem with this? Praveen? And Okay. So basically there is a problem which uh, I was waiting for somebody to identify. <clears throat> let's say file 1 is in disk 2 and 3 and file 2 is in disk 4 and 5 how will this happen where will mapper run okay so file 1 is disk 2 and disk 3 so let's imagine that all of these disk 4 and 5 are on different different computers for time being okay so file 1 is on node number 2 as well as node number three while file two is on disk number four and disk number five right or node number four and node number five that's this okay to say right now when you merge file one and file two's input is actually nothing but saying my file is existing on Node number two, node number three, node number four, node number five, five, 
right? And and that's how the whole mapper thing works. Mapper basically assumes that its file is spreading across four nodes instead of two two nodes. And then it will do the way we we provided a folder, right? In the previous case, we can provide in the same way two files as the input. The mapper will run in this case if you have two, three, four, five, four nodes. Mapper will run on all four separately. All right. And whatever output comes in will get transferred to a central node where the churning will happen, where the combining will happen, and then the output will be stored back onto HDFS. Good. Yeah. So the problem which I see here is in case this list is too big in case this list is too big then you will have to iterate over this list and then assign these values okay that's the only challenge it is there so in case you make a mistake over here or you try to sort it then it is going to be a big problem here this list is going to be huge but Generally, Hadoop does not cause a problem, but if you try to load all of the values into memory, all of this whole value into memory, then you, you are going to get stuck. But in case you are just keeping it as a as something you can read a stream from, then, then you can simply, the first one you can pick up as 5, and then B5, C5, you can keep on doing it without having to churn anything. Yeah, something like everybody voted for somebody like X, Y, Z, right? In that case, in that case, or A voted for hundreds of people, right? If A voted for hundreds of people, this list is going to be very big, okay? Unlike our elections where one per we vote only for one person, in this democracy, everybody was free to vote for everybody, right? Therefore, A could have voted for hundreds of people. So this this list could have gone pretty big. So that's the only catch in the whole game. Otherwise, there is not much of a problem. All right. Anybody else? I would actually love to see because there are always problems with a particular code. This does work, but it could be made better. All right. So these were few examples, few examples which were uh, you know which we walked across, walked through. Why is the weight coming always first? That's a good question. That's a good question. Hmm. That's a good question. Now, all right, all right, let me just think about it. Yeah, because Here, right, right. So here the weight is basically coming because, it, I mean, the way you merge the files, you can actually set that this should be my, I mean, in the input itself while concatenating, you can keep that weight, the second file as above and the second first file as below. And while sorting, while sorting, it will sort on the key and therefore, whatever order is your value, it's generally a stable sort. Whatever order in in the original one it was, it would be that way. I that means what I'm trying to say is that like this. All right, something of this sort. Okay. Or maybe I was lucky to get the number first in my code. 
maybe next time if you execute it maybe in your case the five goes later and yes that could be one of the problem in, in this code and uh, then yeah then i need to come up with a better solution okay so for me it so happens that it was a stable sort where i came i got the five as before because my actual data was in the same order okay because it doesn't sort the values at all it doesn't touch the values okay all right all right so this will be interesting to actually observe if that happens elsewhere all right now we have got this now we talked about all sorts of examples here right how we utilize sorting to solve multitude of problems and as a matter of fact lots and lots of problems can be actually modeled in MapReduce. the whole sql can be modeled in a very very simple manner whatever sql can do you can easily do all of that using MapReduce. all right so there are few things you should be aware if you if you if you have got a hammer do not think of everything as nail and therefore there are some problems which cannot be solved using MapReduce just like that okay and you should not be using MapReduce for everything so if the job can be happily done by a single machine in reasonable time then do it on single machine don't involve the MapReduce right away okay because for the job that can be decently done at an accepted value on a single machine is most likely going to be a smaller in size and there you will find a considerable boot up time in MapReduce close to five to second five to six seconds go in the boot up time And most of the map reduce process is batch wise which means that there is no guarantee immediately that you get a result you will have to wait and keep polling second second and the most important part probably is whenever the computation depends on previously computed values then you cannot use map reduce at all for example you cannot make Fibonacci series generation as distributed process right because in Fibonacci series what we used to do fn equals fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 which means the nth value is sum of the previous two values okay in Fibonacci series which means it requires the computation of previous two values and therefore therefore Fibonacci series is not a great great candidate for being conversion into MapReduce all right okay and full text indexing or ad hoc searching is not something basically something where you can you don't want any batch processing and something which requires a boot up time you should not be using MapReduce MapReduce is great for doing things in the background where you don't require the immediate immediate response right away or similar to Fibonacci computation there could be other algorithms which might require a certain shared global state in those cases MapReduce is not a good candidate all right map reduce is not a good candidate 
So whenever you need a shared state or you need to use the pre previously computed values, then do not use MapReduce. Okay, so those are the limitations you should keep in mind because I see that I start seeing that a lot of people start thinking that they will do their normal normal work which they were doing with the single computer using MapReduce. Okay. So while we were talking about a streaming job, while we were talking about a streaming job, we did mention that this is how, this is what the, this is what your mapper is doing the job, right? So, okay. So we talked about a streaming job, but we did not talk about how to test. Okay. So whenever you are testing your MapReduce job, the way we, we build a whole MapReduce job today, First, test on very small data. And beautiful part about the streaming job is you can do the same thing without Hadoop also. Whatever mapper code you write, whatever script you pass to Hadoop, you can also do the same thing by yourself. Get input file, then pass it to mapper, then sort it, and then give it to reducer, and then save it in the output file. And there, that is your output. It is as simple as that. Also, you can, you should be, before stitching the whole code, you should be testing the mapper as well as reducer separately. Okay? And then you can stitch it like this and you get the results quickly. Most of my, most of my streaming job, I have tested exactly this way. And that has been like a very, very, very handy thing. And that's probably one reason why I love streaming job because I can test it immediately this way. Okay. If you are into, into Java and if you are writing your MR code in Java, then it comes. The idea is to let the future teller tell you about your past and then you. Good night, all.